The interrupter is enclosed in a pipe-like tank. The interrupter is an insulating tube which houses the interrupting mechanisms and insulates them from the outer tank. The main arc extinguishing features of the interrupter include a stationary contact assembly, a moving contact assembly, and a chamber where gas is compressed during the operation of the breaker. Each of the contact assemblies includes main contact fingers and arcing contact fingers. The moving contact assembly also includes a non-conducting nozzle. In addition to housing the interrupting mechanisms, the insulating tube is filled with SF6 gas at a low pressure. When the breaker is closed, the current path is through the stationary contact assembly, the main contact fingers, and the moving contact assembly. When the breaker trips, the moving contact assembly moves away from the stationary assembly, and the main contact fingers separate. Arcing does not occur because the circuit is still complete through the arcing contacts. As the moving contact assembly moves away from the stationary assembly, the SF6 gas in the compression chamber is compressed, improving the dielectric strength of the gas. The moving contacts continue to move so that the arcing contact fingers separate and an arc forms. When the arcing contact fingers separate, the compression chamber opens. The high pressure gas in the chamber flows through the arc to the low pressure areas of the interrupter. The dielectric strength of the high pressure gas weakens the arc, and as the gas flows through the arc, the arc is lengthened and cooled until it extinguishes at a current zero. So both a gas puffer and a gas blast breaker use gas to extinguish an arc. However, a gas blast breaker stores high pressure gas in a reservoir until it's needed. A gas puffer breaker contains high pressure gas only for the brief moment between when the breaker trips and when the arc extinguishes.